Hey, welcome back to my series, the seven most important tools for modern WordPress development. Just a reminder that only the first few videos of the series will make it onto YouTube. The rest of them, you will have to go to my website, brandcords.com and sign up for my email newsletter to get the rest of the seven most important tools. So definitely after this video, go and sign up. Today, we're going to do WordPress modern development most support tool number two. And the tool that we are looking at today is called WordPress slash create block. So WordPress slash create block is a package in the Gutenberg repository. It's a tool that you can use to scaffold up a custom block. If you're doing custom block development in WordPress, the truth is also that I use this even when I'm not making a block, I kind of use it to scaffold a lot of my projects, uh, cause I find it that useful, but today we're just going to focus on scaffolding up blocks quickly with WordPress create block. So what does that mean that it's a package? Well, if you go to the Gutenberg repository on GitHub, there's a folder called packages. And these are literally all the like different, like functional bits of Gutenberg. There's a, you know, a package just of the like UI components. There's a package that has all the blocks that are in WordPress, you know, packages for, you know, connecting to API, all these sort of like broken down packages that are bundled together to make the block editor, but some of them are used outside and we'll kind of throughout the course of the series, look at a few of these, but create block is one of these packages. And really it's honestly just a command that you can run in your terminal to scaffold up uh, a full new project or even just a folder of a block. So let's take a look at what it looks like in action. Okay. So I'm in VS code in the plugins directory of a local WordPress development site. And I'm thinking that I need to make a new plugin that's going to hold a block. So I can use the create block package by running NPX, which is just a sort of a version of NPM, but it, what it does is it allows you to connect to things over the internet and just like run them and pull them down. So I'm going to run at WordPress slash create block. And there's a bunch of arguments you can pass to it, but the main one that it's most interested in is the name of the block. So we'll just call it example block. And once you do that, it's going to go, it's going to grab that package. It's going to run it and it's going to scaffold out everything you need to have a block and it's going to make it in a new directory. So I'm in my plugins folder. You can see it's made a new directory called example block, just the name of my block. And it's really great for spinning up single block plugins. And then it's going to download the WordPress slash scripts package, another package from that repository that we were looking at. It's going to scaffold out a bunch of code. It's going to create it and it's going to tell you all the different commands. So if I open that example block folder, you can see here that it's actually done all the work of making a plugin for me. It does the whole plugin thing. It actually registers the block types so while the code is ready. It gives me a package.json file with the WordPress scripts package installed and a bunch of build scripts. And it gives me all the code I need for my first block. And so it has kind of everything you need. So that's like the first thing it does simple, make a new plugin, make a block in it, but there's a lot more that you can do with it, starting with multiple blocks in the same project. So let's say I've made one block in this project, but I don't want just one block. I want multiple blocks. So let's say I'm just going to move all of this code into this example block folder because I'm actually going to have multiple folders in here. So there's source, and then I'm going to have multiple blocks inside. That's something you can definitely do. So let's jump into the right folder. We're in the example block directory. So now what I can do is I can jump into that source folder and I can run it again, npx WordPress slash create block. We'll call this one another block. And I can say dash dash no plugin because I already have a plugin installed. I don't need it. I actually just need the block. So I'm going to say no plugin and I'm going to run that. And so what it's actually going to do is do the same process of run across the internet, grab the create block. But this time it doesn't need to install WordPress scripts. There's no other node modules it needs to deal with because I already have all of that done. And now in my source folder, I have two separate blocks. So I can keep doing that. I can keep scaffolding blocks with the plugin and, you know, writing a one line of code is always just going to be a lot faster than going through and building all of these files out. And one last step you'd need to do is to go into your main plugin file and make sure that you're registering the blocks because they're now going to live in different folders, not just one block in one folder. So make sure you register all those blocks. Now let's look at one third example, which is using a different template. So I'm going to do the same command. I'm going to create another block. Let's call this one dynamic block. And I'm going to use another flag here called variant, which means basically a different type of block. And I'm going to say dynamic. And I'm going to run that. And this is something you can do. You can actually make your own variants. Other people have them online, but it's basically like different templates for different types of blocks that have different things already installed. And in this case, we ran what's called a dynamic block, which means our block actually has a PHP file that we get to use to render the block on the front end. This is kind of the most common type of custom block that's usually made because it lets you actually just use PHP 
you can combine it with other components like server side render that make it very simple where you're basically making most of your block in PHP and only need a little bit of React and JavaScript. So this is definitely something you can use and you can even get a little bit more creative with the WordPress create block command by passing it different variables, different names, stuff to really scaffold out different types of blocks as part of your build process. So WordPress has create block is my number two tool because I do use it all the time. I use it for things other than blocks. I use it for really just scaffolding anything when I want to make something that's going to work with the block editor. It's super handy and useful. So if you like this one, like I said, head to briancores.com and sign up for the email newsletter because I have more of the most important tools for modern WordPress development coming for people who sign up.